Welcome back to my video series about how to build a sub 250 gram, three inch freestyle drone for absolute beginners who have never built a drone before. This is a video series. So if this is the video you were looking for, then great. But if you just stumbled across this video, then feel free to watch it. But if it feels like you're coming in in the middle, that's why. There is a playlist linked in the video description below that has all the videos in this series. And if you're not sure what the heck's going on here, then you should go back to video number one and. Hopefully it'll all make sense. A whole bunch of the content in the video that you're about to watch is borrowed from my previous build series where I built a five inch drone. I just couldn't bear to re-record hours and hours of content that was gonna be exactly the same, except instead of me holding a five inch drone in my hand, I'd be holding a three inch drone. I'm going back through these videos and anytime there is t a content that is unique to the three inch drone that you're building right now, I'm gonna, re I'm gonna record that and I'm gonna edit it in. But if there's a whole bunch of this video where I'm talking and I'm holding a five inch drone instead of a three inch, don't let it confuse you, it still applies to what you're doing. Before we get into the meat of this video, I wanna ask you to pause the video and go to another video I made and do something. And what I want you to do is calibrate your gimbals. Calibration tells the radio like where the end points of the gimbals are. If it's miscalibrated, like when you move the stick over to the right, it may not go all the way to the right, or it may go too far to the right. Um, most of the time, this radio is gonna come from the, from the factory with correctly calibrated gimbals, but just in case I want you to do it manually one time, it's always a good idea to do that if you've got a brand new controller. If you know that your controller's gimbals are calibrated correctly because you've been using it previously, then you can skip that step. Otherwise, there is a link in the video description to my video about how to calibrate your gimbals correctly. If you think you know how to calibrate gimbals, do me a favor and go watch the video anyway because there's a common mistake people make when they calibrate their gimbals that I talk about in that video that I want to make sure that you didn't make that mistake. After your gimbals are calibrated, come back here and keep watching. Now that we've got the controller bound to the receiver and the receiver actually talking to the flight controller, the next thing to do is to check our channel mapping. And what that means is here in the Betaflight receiver tab, we are gonna move our controls one by one and we're gonna make sure that the correct channel moves for each of the controls that we move. So the four main controls of an aircraft, multi-rotor, fixed wing, whatever, are the throttle, the yaw axis, which makes sort of think of that as like looking left and right, the roll axis, which is like tilting to the side, and the pitch axis, which is like looking up and down. And each of those controls is mapped to one of the four axes on our main control sticks. The standard layout that most people in the world are going to use is referred to as mode two. And mode two means that the controls are mapped as follows. The throttle is up and down on the left stick. The yaw axis is left and right on the left stick. The pitch axis is up and down on the right stick and the roll axis is left and right on the right stick. I strongly encourage everyone getting into RC hobby to learn in mode two, unless you know for a fact that the majority of people who you fly with fly in another mode. And the only real exception is gonna be that there are a few places in the world where the majority of people still fly in mode one. If everybody at your local flying club flies in mode one, then go ahead and learn in mode one because that's just what, it's very convenient to fly with the same controls as the people you fly with. Because if they're like, hey, let me see your quad. It sounds like maybe your PID tune could be better. Or do you wanna try my new quad that I just got? Here, take my controller and give it a whirl. It's very convenient if you can handle their controls but most people the world over should fly in mode two. I will say that there are, and I sound like an old person. I feel like an old person when I say this. There are kids getting into this hobby who learned controls on the freaking Xboxes and the freaking Playstations. And so they're used to FPS video games and they map the, I don't even have to think about how the controls map. They would rather have their controls for their aircraft be more like they're playing an FPS game. I think it's mode three or mode four that they like to fly. I strongly encourage you to try to learn mode two. And if after 15 hours of practice in the simulator, you just cannot make mode two click, then I guess you have my permission to try to reshuffle the controls, but you are making your life harder going forward because you won't be able to fly 
the mass, the vast majority of other crafts, mass majority of other crafts that are configured for mode two. We're going to be going with mode two going forward. So I'm going to move the throttle channel and sure enough, the throttle channel moves up and down. I'm going to move the yaw channel and sure enough, the yaw channel moves left and right. I'm going to move the pitch channel and sure enough, the pitch channel moves up and down. I'm going to move the roll channel and sure enough, the roll channel moves left and right. By luck or skill, my channel mapping is correct from the beginning. If my channel mapping was not correct, for example, now my channel mapping is not correct, then I would see that when I move the throttle channel, the pitch channel moves. Okay, so how do we fix that? Uh, if your mapping is not correct, go down to the channel map and there are two preset channel maps, three actually, the default, free, it looks like the free sky in the default are the same, and then Spectrum Grotner JR. Choose the free sky and see if that's correct. And if that doesn't work, choose the spectrum and see if that's correct. And then if none of those are correct for you, you can actually type the letters a, E, T, R, one, two, three, four. You can literally type the letters in any order. Take a look right here, A, E, R, T. Why is it not R, P, Y, T? Roll, pitch, yaw, throttle. It's aileron, elevator, roll, and throttle. That's the control surfaces of an airplane, which quadcopters don't even have control surfaces, so it's kind of dumb, but A, roll, E, pitch, R, yaw, T, throttle. Basically, rearrange these four letters into the order that makes your controls map correctly and then hit save. Once the channel mapping is correct, the next thing we're gonna do is check the channel direction. And channel direction means that when I push the throttle up, the channel goes towards 2000. And when I push it down, it goes down towards 1000, okay? When I push the yaw left, the channel goes down. When I push the yaw right, the channel goes up. Pitch forward is up, pitch back, is down and roll left and roll right. If any of your channels are reversed, which I, I don't see why they would be, but if any of your channels are reversed, here's how to deal with that. What I want you to do is press the model key on your radio and then page to the inputs screen. And here on the input screen, I want you to see that all of these numbers are 100. If somehow one of these numbers has been changed to a negative number, like minus 100, it will invert the channel. And what you're going to do is you're going to highlight the one that you need to change. You're going to press the jog wheel and click to edit. And you're going to go down to this parameter called weight. And you're going to modify that parameter and just move the scroll wheel to change it to 100. Now, it's very unlikely that that's happened. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to page to the mixes screen. All of the numbers there should be 100. If any of those numbers are negative, that's why your channel is reversed. We're going to long press and edit. We're going to go down to wait and we're going to click and roll the jog wheel to make that number be 100. It's very unlikely that that happened, but I guess it's very unlikely that your channel would be reversed at all. But just in case. The last thing I want to show you is if you press the page key to go to the outputs screen. On any of these outputs, if I click the jog wheel one time and edit and go down to direction, I can invert the direction of the channel and that will also cause the channel to be inverted. If any of those three things have been done, then your channel will be reversed, but probably that hasn't happened. I just wanted to see why. Before we continue with the video, I'd like to remind you that the single best way for you to help make sure that I am able to continue making content like this, which hopefully you value, is to join my Patreon. Patreon is a website where you subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month. That's the minimum amount, just $2 a month. Uh, uh, someone's vacuuming. But join my Patreon, get access to my Discord server, and just feel good about supporting the work that I do here. If you watch my content regularly, uh, then hopefully, eventually, you'll come to a point where you go, this guy's earned my support. If today is that day, join my Patreon at any level, at any dollar value that you pick $2, pick $5, pick $10, pick whatever amount you think is fair for the amount of value you get out of my content. There's a link down below where you can click through. And if today is not the day, if you're like, oh, I just want to watch the video, you've probably already skipped ahead. But uh, yeah, keep watching the content. I'll keep making the content. And I hope that day comes.
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to fix the endpoints of our channels. I want you to notice that when I put the throttle all the way down, the channel goes to 989, and when I put the throttle all the way up, it goes to 2012. The flight controller expects those numbers to be 1,000 and 2,000, and uh, there's almost no downside to just leaving them as they are. In fact, I'm kind of confused as to why they don't default to 1,000 to 2,000, but they don't. There's a thing we can do to fix this, and I do it. You only have to do it one time in the model, and then every model you bind, every, every uh, aircraft you bind to that model going forward will have the fix made. Let me show you how to fix it. We're going to press the model key, and we're going to page to the outputs screen. And in the outputs screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the throttle up and down, and I want you to see that this 1500 US here, that's showing the current channel value of whichever channel is selected. So right now channel one is selected, and as I move the throttle, nothing is happening. It's not moving. So I'm gonna go down to channel two, and moving the throttle, nothing's happening. I'm gonna go down to channel three, aha! Now do you see that when I move the throttle, it goes from 2012 to 988. So now channel three is our throttle channel, and we do this with the throttle because the throttle's not spring-loaded, so it's easy to put down and up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click the jog wheel one time and click edit. And then I'm going to go down to min. I'm going to put the throttle all the way down. I'm going to highlight min and I'm going to click to edit that value. And I'm going to look up here at 988 US, 988 microseconds. And I'm going to look in beta flight at the throttle channel, which should match that value pretty closely. And I'm going to roll the jog wheel until I get to a thousand. Okay, there's a thousand. Now in beta flight, when the throttle is all the way down, we're at 1,000, isn't that nice? And then we're gonna put the throttle all the way up, 2012. I'm gonna click to select that value and scroll down to max. And I'm gonna adjust max the exact same way to make the maximum value be 2,000. Now in rare cases, you won't be able to hit exactly 1,000 and 2,000. It may go from 999 to 1,001. Don't stress about that. It doesn't really matter, you're close enough, okay? So now we have set the min and the max to 97.8 and minus 97.8. That makes our endpoints be exactly 1,000 and 2,000. And that's what we want. Next, we're gonna hit the return key to back out and once again to back out. And finally, with channel three, which we just adjusted, selected, we're gonna long press the jog wheel and copy min max to all. What that's going to do is that's going to copy those endpoints to all of the other channels so that now the yaw channel, 1,000 and 2,000. Pitch channel, 2,000 and 1,000. 1,000 and 2,000. Now our endpoints are correct. There's one more thing I want you to do here in the receiver tab, and that is I want you to adjust the stick low and the stick high threshold. And I'm not sure how much detail I'm going to go into on this because I don't want to get bogged down, but when you have your endpoints set correctly, 1,000 to 2,000, it's a good idea to adjust your stick low and your stick high threshold to be closer to those values. So we're gonna set our stick low threshold from 1050 down to 1010. You might be tempted to like, since my channel goes down to 1000, let's set it to 1000, but don't do that or you may have trouble arming the quad. You need a little bit of spacing between the stick low threshold and the actual lowest channel value. So I'm gonna set the stick low threshold to 1010 and the stick high threshold to 1990. Uh, which are both 10 off from the min and max. Uh, if you are someday dealing with a quadcopter that hasn't had the endpoints set correctly, always set the endpoints correctly before you adjust the stick low and the stick high threshold, otherwise the quadcopter may refuse to arm. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save to save that. And now your control sticks are perfectly calibrated, set up and ready to fly your quadcopter. Next thing we need to do is set up our aux modes so that we can like arm the quadcopter. And that's gonna be the topic for the next video. Uh, link to the playlist down, in the, you know the drill by now. There's a link to the entire playlist of all of these videos down in the video description and a card will appear on screen if the platform you're watching on supports cards. I will see you there.